So much to dive into. Tommy Green, NBC Sports Philadelphia. He was doing all the pre- and post-game stuff over the weekend, Pete Thompson. Yes, Mike Hill. So he saw a lot of that Brewers series, in which the Phillies won, by the way. Yeah, that's important to note. Although it was a roller coaster ride, as it always seems to be when they go to Milwaukee. Yes, uh, and then last night, of course, uh, they, they go down. They come back. It was a nice win last night, but it always seems that even when there's wins, there's questions surrounding this Phillies team. And one of the things last night, Larry Anderson on the Phillies radio broadcast said, Peter, he said, quote, not everyone can pitch the ninth inning. I know Gabe Kapler thinks they can, but they can't. And we had a lot of discussion about this earlier, about the way this bullpen is being used. And then last night, of course, they kind of blew a save, but it wasn't really the pitcher's fault as much as the catcher yeah, didn't nah. get the job done. But it's been, an un, you know, uh, there has been a lot of questions about the bullpen usage here. So we'll bring Tommy Green into the conversation, a guy uh, who knows a thing or two about pitching. And he's a guy who was a starting pitcher. And I know just listening to him on some of the postgame things saying, you know, hey, I, there's a lot of situations that he wouldn't want to be taken out of games. But how about the way, Tommy, that the – uh, the late innings are kind of being used in this situation. Like, sometimes they get it done, sometimes they don't. But we're only in June, and I'm concerned that, man, what's this bullpen going to look like in August? I mean, that, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, that's how the game has changed um, uh, for a while now. I mean, you look back when we played, guys. I mean, we had a 10-man staff, five starter, five relievers. You couldn't necessarily – I mean, you couldn't do what they're doing today with a five-man bullpen. I mean, the starter's going to have to eat more innings, and sometimes the reliever's going to have to stay, you know, a little bit. They match up so – try to match up so so often now. They make so many moves during the course of the game. I mean, and you got to realize each time a guy gets up, that's a, that's a wear and tear part of you, you know, uh, a wear and tear part of your – you know, on your body physically uh, during the course of the season. Now, if they're running – you know, you're pitching a starter five innings and then bringing in four relievers every night. I mean, it, it, it takes you time. You know, last night was this good situation. You're not going to find a better game pitch by by, um, by anybody. Pavetta, you know, gives up two two long balls, still the home runs, which it, it never it, it's not ever going to hurt anybody. And, you know, and you get in a situation where he gets a no decision, <laughs> no decision in the ball game. We call that a hard hang with him. But you know, <laughs> it, it comes out of the situation that the thing. Uh, you know, making a play, and we we tend to th make things interesting uh, uh, as a team right now. And I heard a good thing today while coming back from the gym, listening to the talk show on the radio. He says that we got to remember these guys are young, and you're right; they're going to make mistakes, and hopefully they learn from them and, and stop making the silly mistakes, or or the, uh, I'm not saying silly mistakes, but the the, the mistakes as as often. Uh, which are costing them. They're lucky right now, I think, to be above 500. You know the way they played, and especially the way they swung the bat for the most part. You know the last month and a half, uh, uh, a month, a little over a month or so, where their big guys not swinging it. Um, they found ways to to stay afloat, and and that's a good trait for a team to have. Now, if the bat, bats catch fire, catch fire, and they get some. A little bit of consistent pitching. I mean, it don't have to be great, but keeps them in ball games, chance to win. You never know what this team might be able to do. But the big thing is going to be getting some of that bullpen help back. Like we're missing Nishak. We're missing a veteran guy down there too to help those guys uh, because they got a lot of young arms down there. And right now, we're not healthy. Uh, Tommy Green's with us. I want to play a clip for you. This was on MLB Tonight last night, and one of the guys on the set said this. I want to get your reaction. I'll say this is. If the save rule was never created, this is how everybody would use it. People manage to a rule. There's nothing else in sports like it. People manage to a win for five innings, and people manage to a save. They're both artificially created things that people manage to. You agree with that? Essentially, he's saying people clamor for this closer because there's a number attached to it when he gets a save. So we feel like that is a sign of success when you have 40 saves you've had a good year. So he's essentially saying if they never in invented this save role, we wouldn't be asking for guys to close games out. It would it would it would just be conventional that whoever's the best guy for that day would be the guy pitching. Well, I mean, I can see where they're coming from, but still I can also see where Larry Anderson uh comes from. <laughs> yeah. And you still got to get the last three outs of the game. And there's sometimes guys have issues with that. Um I mean, it's uh, guys uh, start pitchers completing games. 
Uh, I mean, they get in the ninth inning and they can't quite get over it up after they've been dealing the whole time. Um, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, still, I think it's a special, uh, a special trait you got to have to get those last three outs. And some guys, 10 has got that good tendency. They don't rattle. I have, I'd have to say demeanor wise. And the way they carry it himself, you know, we got a young guy down there who might have the capability of doing it if he keeps maturing and doing with Sir Anthony, you know. So, um, I mean, that's and, and obviously the stuff. I mean, he's got the pitch makeup to do it, and and also the uh, uh, the mentality to do it, the way he, his presence on the mound and stuff, and he and he does those strikes. So it's been interesting to see some of his maturity now. You know, ever since he broke the street and gave up a runs and see how he comes back from that, because he's going to have some times where he struggles a little bit. But he finds his way, like, the, in Milwaukee to come back and get out of that situation, get out of those situations, you know, when he has a couple runners on. And then, which is, a, you know, I wanted to see that in him, because that's what you've got to be able to do as a as a end of the bullpen guy. You know, that's you can't call him a closer now because they don't have one. <laughs> uh, he's the end of the bullpen guy. I mean, he's going to match up against anybody. I don't know why they wouldn't call him a closer, but he's going to match up well against anybody. Now, Tommy Green's with us. Tommy, the argument on the other side is that you need to have defined roles and that players respond to knowing what their role is. So how important were the roles on your 1993 team? How important were those roles to that team's success, knowing your role? Well, I mean, I guess it was a big thing. Guys knew their role. I mean, I remember back when I first came to the big leagues, I never pitched a day in my life in the bullpen. Um you know, until I got up in the big league. So I had to learn <laughs> how it works a little bit. And then look, I tell you what, it was probably the best thing for me because I knew I had to come to the ballpark prepared to pitch every day, no matter what. Even though I was more of a longer guy, I had to be ready from the first inning to, I mean, through the ninth inning. And if somebody tied it up, I was the guy that was going to be pitching forever, you know, that type of guy. So I had to mentally be ready every day. And I mean, I could end up closing the game if it got late and nobody. You know, or I could pitch the second through the sixth or seventh inning or whatever long they needed me. So I had the chance to mentally grow. I sort of knew my role, but also I had different roles. Uh, so I guess what I'm saying, you have to come to ballpark ready to pitch every day. And that's the mentality you have to pitch it. If, if the phone rings and your name's mentioned, it's still, I mean, you've got to be prepared to go. And that's bottom line. Um, it's good to have those roles. I guess some some guys respond different to the others, just like me as a start pitcher. <clears throat> I was, uh, you know, uh, if I got too much information, I guess you, you've heard the phrase uh, paralysis by analysis type thing. You start, you know, locking up. I was one of those guys I had to trust in my ability to. I took the knowledge, took what I, uh, the, the stuff they were giving me. I took the little tidbits I needed and threw the rest out the frigging window. If I made my pitches, it was going to be hard for them to do what they wanted to do. That's the way I looked at it. So I kind of kept it simple. Tommy, Mike and I talked earlier in the show about Adubre Ramos uh, had been so effective when he came in, got two outs, bang, bang. Why not leave him? Why, why not trot him back out there if if you're okay with – nine pitches? Right. Yeah, I mean, he only threw nine pitches total. If you're okay with Dominguez going two innings, why not try it with Ramos? Well, I mean, exactly. I mean, I, it's just – I mean, it's just uh, – I guess it's – being around the ballpark, being around the guys he stayed, how they respond, he's real big by what I'm gathering on the matchups and who he thinks is going to be best matched up against uh, a, a different uh, uh, what's coming up in the lineup. And they're obviously looking at the numbers and I mean and, and the type of stuff their pitchers have got and how it reacts. Or I mean, they got guys, young guys down there with quality stuff. It's all about. Uh, it's all about the, the maturation process, get them getting in ball games and proving themselves in, under fire and see who's going to take the bull by the horns and do that. And, and eventually, they, I mean, they're going to find something like this. You know, I, mean, they, I mean, if you told them at the beginning of the season, before the season started, they'd be, you know, six, you know, six or seven or eight games above 500 worth, I mean, uh, at this date in the ball game, and they would have been ecstatic. With what was going on, yeah. I mean, yeah, you go into every year wanting to win, but also they're they're they also know, and we also know they're they're still developing. You know, these old guys are getting quality experience and going, but these developing guys can take the bulls by the horn once they get by the horns, and once they get, I mean, they get a little comfortable. Good things can happen, you know. That's when you start to blossom, and and that's where your superstars come from. The superstars not necessarily come in here their, their first year and light it on fire. You know, they kind of grow it. Some of them grow into it, and all of a sudden, hey, where did he come from out of nowhere? And all of a sudden, he's great. 
So, I mean, it takes a little bit of time. we got some guys. We're going to go through some growing pains. The biggest thing is health, guys. So you hear me say it all the time. If we can stay healthy and get the chance to see what they got, then they can make a move if they feel like they need to and what's going to happen on, you know, on the left side of the infield or wherever they're going to do things or, you know, I mean, if they're going to require some help, you know, otherwise. But I think right now you got to find out what they got. And they got some quality arms down there. They just got to get healthy down in the bullpen. Well, Tommy, it seems yeah. like in Kapler's mind, he feels like if the three, four, five hitters are up in the seventh inning, that is more important or more difficult than if the nine, one, and two guys were up in the ninth. You know what I mean? Like he feels like, all right, the three, four, five guys are up in the seventh. If we can get them out, they don't come up again, and I'll just take my chances with who's left to face the nine, one, two hitters in the ninth inning. So I, I guess that's kind of the concept there. Well, I mean, I guess I mean it all depends on what's going on in the ball game. You know, it's it's also where where is your starting pitcher at? It was great to see Pavetta go and in, work into the eighth inning last night. And I heard you he say like he was on. A, I, I heard he probably, you say you would not want like it to another planet. I, I heard you say <laughs> you would not have wanted to come out of that game when he was up two one. They 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 hit for him with runners at second and third. Now it worked out for Kapler, no, but you said no, you would in Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah, but you said you would right. not have wanted to come out. No, I mean, I know personally I wouldn't have. You know, I'm glad it worked out for him. I'm glad, I'm glad it worked out for him. But I'd have, I mean, I think Eflin was probably a little pissed too. If he, hey, if he wasn't, there's something wrong with him. And that's, I mean, that's just the way. No doubt. I mean, as a starting pitcher, I'm, geared, I'm not geared to go five innings, especially when I'm throwing the ball well. Uh, I mean, yeah, he struggled the first inning, got, kind of kept it in, in gear. And, and after that, it was, hey, let's, let's go have some fun. And that's what was happening. And then, and then they pulled a plug on him. I, I mean, I'd have a little bit of issue with that. I mean, I'm up two and one in a ball game. What's wrong with pitching me up two and one in a ball game? And, you know, it's like you, you know, that's I mean, that National League I, I game. I don't get that. That's that National League I mean, game where the decision that. comes in, right? Well, we, I mean, a decision comes in, but we were winning the ball game. It'd been <laughs> different if we were down two and one. Yeah, you oh, know, it'd be a little bit. I can see that better, but uh, I mean, that's just the situation. I mean, that's why I like National League baseball. I've always been in favor for National League baseball. But also been a favor. Uh, my managers knew for the most part that I got a chance as a hitter, as a pitcher. I took pride in myself as as a hitter. I got just as good a chance of putting the ball in play and, and, and hitting the ball hard as anybody else on the bench does, <laughs> you know. And it helped me help me stay in ball games. Yeah. Because I could handle the bat. I could put the ball down. I mean, I could put the ball in play. Right. Right. You know, right. The majority of the time, you know, unless you're facing. I mean, you, could, you know, I mean, because we're not hitting but once every five days, but still. I mean, I could run in some stuff and hit the ball hard just as anybody else. Well, and, and see, that's why I, I think that's where the game's changed that a little bit too. Yeah, these guys younger are not swinging the bat. No doubt, know? no doubt. And uh, if you hit the ball and put it in play against this Phillies team, you'd have a good chance to get on base because they made they fifty-four errors. Uh, as Jerry Krasnick <laughs> tweeted out the other day, a scout told him that the Phillies first baseman in left, you got a second baseman at short, you've got a shortstop at third. Um, and then you see Franco make a hell of a play last night. He's not in the lineup at yeah. all. Do you like their defense? I tell you what, I said it the other night. That we we were on the air at NBC, and uh, and they, they said our ideal infield. You know, I said, and my first question, I said, does Santana can Santana Santana play third? Because I want I want Reese there, and they were like, well, he's played twenty four games there, and you know, one time or another. I said that's not enough. So I said, right now. With what they're doing, Franco's not getting to play, and there's a reason why. I don't know if I mean they're looking to move him or looking to do whatever. I'd play Franco there and uh, and tell him to get on top of the friggin' baseball when he throws it across the diamond because he's got more chance to run it into things and, and, and with the bat in his hand than J.P. Crawford does. You know, swinging the bat and J.P. Crawford's got a long long swing right now until he starts cutting it down. I mean, it, he's going to be where he's at. You know, he better, he better play uh, all-star defense because if not, I mean, he's going to be a liability, and uh, he's not going to find himself there long. Um, I'd rather, I mean, I just, I, I told, I told it another day. I said I'd rather have Franco right there. Let him play. If you're looking to move him, maybe you might get something for him because, I mean, the guy's proven in the last couple of years he can hit 25 home runs. I mean, who who else is going to do that right, right. now yeah. other than Reese? You know, maybe Santana's right there, but I mean, but still. And our ballpark, and we don't have the home. We don't have anybody with you know, fifteen, eighteen, you know, fifteen home runs right now. You know, I mean, close to it or more. I mean, with at least one guy. You know, I mean, that's where we're struggling at right now is our power numbers. No so, doubt. 
You know, I mean, that's just me. Tommy Green, NBC Sports, Philadelphia, the Phillies and the Cardinals continuing their series. Uh, he was on that Phillies Brewers series. Yeah, when do we see an next? A lot Tommy? of runs scored in that series. Why not say that again? I missed that. <laughs> when do we see you next? When do we see you next, bud? Uh, oh, ne- middle of next month. I'm not. I'm not doing a lot, but I'm, it'll be the middle of next month, and hopefully that offense. Like, uh, you know, I mean, like last night, I was at the game last night. I was at the ballpark doing some stuff, and and uh, that first inning, man, I got all excited about the offense. They come out doing some positive things. Or doubles fired up a little bit, and that's, that's we got to. I mean, that's what we got to have. A couple of those guys are, are guys at the top of the lineup. You know, Hernandez or, or Dubal, they're getting on base for, you know, for the guys behind them a little bit. It gives us a chance to make a big pop. And that's what, I mean, that's what makes it exciting for the fans. They come out there, it sort of reminds you of Ryan Howard, you know, uh, and the boys back in the day. You know, Jimmy gets on, Chase gets on, and Ryan comes up behind and hit Jimmy, and, and it's all over but the cry. They do that a couple <laughs> times in the game, and the game's over. You uh, know, so it was good to see that last night a little bit. But then I, I want to see him score another run or two, like in the, you know, fifth or sixth inning to kind of push to keep it going a little bit, you know? <laughs> no doubt, and no <laughs> doubt. Big hit. Between sometimes. The big hit came from Aaron Altair. The Phillies winning in extras. Tommy Green here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline taking a look at that Phillies bullpen and defense with us. Thank you, Tommy. Hey, thanks for having me, guys.